Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Business Breakthrough with Barbara show. Everyone, happy Monday. I'm excited to be here uh, today. I didn't do the show last week because we were running our Stand Out and Shine Challenge Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, so I missed you guys for those of you who show up every Monday. Um, let's see, let's see. I have a lot to talk about today. We're going to dive deep into one tip that I have for you that will help you create a coaching program easily. Okay. I think program creation is, by the way, Christmas is like right around the corner. The holidays are here. Um, happy holidays to everyone. You probably won't see me, um, a lot here during Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. My team and I are taking off. Same thing for New Year's. But yeah, happy holidays. I feel like it's been a crazy year, a crazy holiday season. Um, I hope all of you are happy and safe and um, yeah, just sending you all the love in the world for that. Little side note. Okay, so (laughs) program creation is one of the things that I do with almost every single one of my clients. So I market to new coaches, new service-based entrepreneurs, but I don't only work with new coaches, right? Like I also work with website designers, brand strategists, um, public speakers, and and so on. And I also not only work with new coaches, I also work with more advanced coaches. So if someone comes to me and they are a little bit farther ahead in their business, we really don't focus on program creation. We focus on program enhancement because they already have the foundation set. But if they're just getting started, which is, I would say, 75% of my clientele, um, they don't have a program. And here's the thing. If you don't have a program, you don't have a business because you have nothing to sell, right? You may have the prettiest website. You may have the like a growing Facebook group or a growing email list. You may be showing up in social media, but without a program, it's going to be hard to equate that effort and equate that action to profit and results, right? Because we're doing all of these things. We're setting the foundations of our business. We're even growing some of the foundations of our business, but we're not having something to give in exchange for a monetary exchange. Good morning. Let's see. Happy Monday, Barb. Happy Monday to you. Good morning. Happy holidays. Hello. I love when you guys are here and you tell me that you're here. Um, so yeah, that's why today I'm going to keep it simple. It's a super busy week for everyone. So today's just very, very, very simple. But if you know me, you know that simplicity. I really, really believe that simplicity equals results. Like the more that we overcomplicate things, the harder it is to grow a business. So I think this is good, uh, really good in a way. Um, do I have any remarks before I dive into my notes here around how to easily, want to easily create your program? Um, I guess I want to say a few things. Number one, for those of you who participated in the Stand Out and Shine Challenge, I love and adore every single one of you. I really running challenges, master classes, give me free resources. Even this show, it's such a big, um, and fulfilling thing for me that allows me to connect with you guys on a deeper level, support you guys on a deeper level, whether you're a client or not, it really, really brings up so much joy. So thank you if you joined the challenge. Thank you if you were uh, an active participant. Thank you if you were a silent participant. I know so many people join challenges and masterclasses and they just watch and consume the information and that's great. So I see you, I know you're there. Um, thank you for those of you who did your homework and were extremely engaged. And for those of you who participated in the Rise Up giveaway, you guys, this was the hardest choice I've had to make in a while. Um, you may not have participated in the challenge, so I'll just give you a little recap. For the participants of the challenge, I gave away one full spot to Rise Up, which is my signature six-week one-on-one coaching program for new coaches ready to learn exactly how to grow a business. So we go through building the foundations of your business, figuring out who you work with, how you serve them, what solutions you solve, what problems your audience has, your ideal client, your niche, and all that good stuff. Then we dive into program creation and program development. So we create your 
first program together. We're collaborating back and forward on that. And then we go into content strategy and marketing the last two weeks. So it's six really full weeks where you go from having no business to having a full on setup ready to go, already being marketed business. Um, I gave away one full spot for that. And it was such a hard and draining choice. I spent all weekend long deciding on that. Um, so if you participated, thank you. I love and adore you and I appreciate you so much. My team and I spent all weekend trying to think of a way that we could give back to everyone who applied. The application was the easiest thing I've ever done because I wanted to keep it simple over the holidays. My team and I created a way to give back um, to those of you who participated. So if you haven't seen that post, go and check it out. Um, But yeah, I mean, this is just doing things like that is one of the the most fulfilling things for me. But sometimes it's really hard because I have to make really, really, really hard choices. I do want to say something. If you were part of the challenge and you, you apply for the giveaway and you didn't get it, I have been exactly where you are many times. I don't know if you guys know this, but I've applied for Marie, Cor- Marie Forleo's B School when I first started my business about, n- not when I first started, I would say a couple years in, but like at the very beginning stages of my business where I was still like scrambling um, to put things together, I really wanted to join that program and I didn't get it. And I thought my video was the best. And it really was. Like I literally went through every single video and, uh, the the creativity in it was very unique and I didn't get it and I really really feel I really understand how it feels to be disappointed but here's what I have to say that meant nothing about what was possible for me right like not getting that B school scholarship meant nothing about what was possible for me it it was disappointing I had to process a lot of things but use this Two things, use this as inspiration to keep moving forward as a sign that you're getting closer and closer to what you want and need. Um, That's number one. And number two, don't stop participating on my stuff because I am almost always giving something away, right? And, you know, a lot of people would say that's a bad business practice, but I think the more that I give, the more that I get. And that's something that I've proven to myself over and over again. So if you didn't get it, process it. Don't let it mean anything about what's possible for you. Keep taking action in your business. Keep uh, executing what you've learned. And also, also don't stop participating. Don't stop uh, joining my monthly uh, challenges and master master classes and stuff like that because I am always, always giving something away. Okay. Almost always. There's times where I'm like really booked and I don't do it. But most of the time I try to reciprocate um, the joy that you guys bring to me. Ah, Okay. That's it. Oh, and um, we'll save that at the end. I'll save it to the end. So let's dive right in. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Um, have you guys watched Sheets Creek? Every time I say, are you ready? I always think of Alexis when she's doing the audition with Moira. And she's just like, are you ready? Let's do this. <laughs> I feel like if you guys haven't seen it, you think I'm crazy. But it's really funny. Um, such good thoughts about being disappointed. Yes, I had to put that out there because I, I've been there, right? Like I, I'm a go-getter, I apply to things and you know that I think it's part of the process and it means nothing. Years later, I won something else, which was extremely helpful for my business. Um, so don't give up, keep going, keep taking action. It really means nothing about what's possible for you. And also there's so many more opportunities always available for you. If you didn't get it, you also have an opportunity to join for a very, very discounted spot. I only do have two spots for that because I opened up two regulars, three regular spots for January. We already sold one. So I was kind of like booked out with that, but we moved some pieces around and I was able to open up two more spots at a discounted rate for those of you who applied. So that's also there as well. (sighs) Okay, so. One of the biggest mistakes that I see with program creation, guys, and this is something that trips so many people up, is, and it stems from the fact that we're trying to create something from scratch, right? So when you're creating your first program, right, like you have to look at where you're at in your business. So 
you probably haven't really worked with clients. Maybe, maybe you're at a point where you've worked with some pro bono clients, or maybe if you got a coaching certification, they made you do a little bit of coaching. So you maybe have a little bit of clarity and experience, but not that much. And so it's really, really hard. Like if you've been having trouble creating that first program, I think it's the most normal thing in the world. And it's really, really hard because you do not have data to understand exactly what the program needs, right? So if you would say like, I've been coaching for six months, I totally get my ideal client, I know exactly what that what they need, I know exactly what this program needs, I tweak this program based on the coaching that I've been doing, then you, of course, like that would be really easy. Because you have data, you have experience, you have understanding, and you have clarity right? So then the reason why creating your first program is probably one of the hardest programs that you will ever create. And don't get me wrong, six years in, sometimes it's still really hard to stitch it together for me. But it really, it doesn't get any harder than your first program. And that is because you're, you're creating from scratch, like, you really have no idea what needs to go into that program. You really have no idea like exactly how long it should be. You have no idea like what are potential things that your clients may need, right? So like when you're thinking about what bonus should I offer, it's a hard decision because you're like, well, how do I know what bonuses my clients are going to need? right? So for example, in Rise Up, I have a time management bonus and I have, what else do I have? I have other things. I have one more bonus. I can't even remember what it is. I think it's a content uh, a content creation masterclass, right? So that was really easy for me to add in there because I've gone through the program quite a few times, right? So I know like, oh, cool. In the first couple of weeks, people are just getting started. They're having a little bit of um, problems merging their personal life with, with their business and making the space and the time, full-time employees, mom, to actually work in their business. So that's how I knew this time management bonus is going to be really, really helpful for this. The last few weeks, we have a a content masterclass. And the only reason I realized that that was a really important thing was because a lot of my clients for that program are brand new coaches and they, they get a little overwhelmed when it comes to content creation. I also have like a sales page what do I call it? I call it the anatomy of a sales page, right? So I give you a template to help you create like your first sales page for your program. But here's what I'm saying. It's not like I woke up one day and I'm like, this is exactly what people need, right? It took a lot of thinking and it took a lot of brainstorming. And for some of the things that I put in the program, it took a few people going through the program, right? Now, I've been coaching for a long time, so it's a little bit easier because I've worked with a lot of people even before that program, but that's why your first program is so much harder. Is this making sense? I need you guys to let me know if you're following. Let me know if I'm going all over the place. Does this make sense? Say yes. Drop me an emoji. Let me know that I'm on track here. So that's why creating your first program is really hard. So, you know, I could go into all directions here. And be like, well, this is what you should do to create your first program. This is what you need to incorporate. Um, This is what you need to think about. And that would be great. But I think that's missing the point of a foundational tip that a lot of people take for granted. Yeah? And the tip is, drum rolls, please. We need to stop trying to make our first program perfect. Okay? Okay? It's just impossible to make it 100% perfect. I wish, I wish I had a screenshot of what magnetizing success was five years ago. I wish I would have said that. I really, really, really wish I, I would have said that. So I could show you the difference between my six month mentorship versus what it was six years ago. It was good, right? Like it's not like it was a, a crappy program. But it was nothing nearly comparable to what it is today. The reason why 
my pro my like my six month mentorship feels like I'm talking to you like it's perfectly designed for you like it literally has every single thing that you need it's because I have done that program so many times I understand my clients so deeply and that takes a little bit of time so my tip here is let oh thanks for the emoji thank you thank you for letting me know that I am not uh going all over the place so um my tip here is don't try to make it perfect from the beginning. Give yourself the permission to create an imperfect program. You have no idea how many women I talk to or I see in this group that get stuck in program creation for months and months, if not years. That's not an exaggeration. Okay, some of you may be watching and you may know that this is true, right? Like so many people get stuck in like creating the perfect program and they want the perfect thing and months go by and months go by and then a year went by and you still don't have a program or you have a program that you're not comfortable with and so on. Yeah, actually, a lot of my Rise Up clients don't have a program and they have been trying for a bit, whether it's weeks or months or oftentimes years. And that's because we are so stuck in getting it perfect because all the fears come up, right? Like, what if I don't create the perfect program? What if this program doesn't help my clients generate results? What if I don't offer the right thing? How do I know if the program's going to be long enough? And you know what? You're just If you're just starting out and you've never worked with a client before, yes, you're going to have to brainstorm the right things. Yes, you're going to have to take some things into consideration. Yes, there are ways to figure out about how long the program should be but ultimately you're more than anything going to have to give yourself the permission to do it imperfect promise you i promise you the first client i ever took they didn't get a perfect program maybe in their eyes like i i actually remember my first client as if it was yesterday she signed up a couple times afterwards but in in their eyes they were, but in my eyes, I knew that it could be enhanced, right? So you're in perfect 50% of the program. It's probably someone else's 100% because they have no contrast. You're the only one who has contrast. So I'm going to tell you a story because I think this is going to be, it's really helpful when I tell you like real life stories. For Halloween, I love Halloween. I love fall. I love winter. I love the holidays. Like I love anything that requires like a feeling of like partying and joy and doing different things. So this Halloween, we were not able to do anything. I love dressing up. Um, by the way, does anyone else love dressing up? What, what were you for Halloween this year? Um, so we really weren't able to do much because of coronavirus. Nick and I have been very careful. I have my grandparents living with my parents. Um, we're, like, we're just, overall, we just have been doing a lot less than our friends. So right across the street, there's actually a park and we saw a sign and it said like Halloween House of Horror. And it was like this drive through experience that I had never seen before. Obviously, it's a gap that they were feeling in the current state of the world. They said they saw hey, it's Halloween, a lot of people don't want to go out and they don't want to interact to stay safe. Let's create an environment where they can have fun and they can enjoy Halloween from the safety of their cars. I thought it was genius. And Nick right away was like, let's buy tickets. So he bought a ticket and the day comes and we are um, driving there super excited. I'm like, yes, I'm about to get super scared. I can't wait. First of all, it was so poorly designed. The line took over an hour. Like we literally had to wait in the car for over an hour. If I had to pee, which often happens, I would have been screwed because it was very poorly designed in the sense of like, they gave you a time frame. You can come from like seven to nine. So everyone came whenever they want to. So if you went at the time that it was super busy, then you had to wait more in line. Then once you went in there, it was fun and it was cool and it was interesting. And obviously it was something, it was so much better than doing nothing. Um, We get scared a couple of times, so it was really cool. But you could tell that that was put together very fast. That was probably something who was like, I have an idea, this market needs this, let me just put something together, 
you could tell 100%. Like you would go through, like you would, your car would have to go through the lines. And then like one side would have like Halloween, a Halloween setup, like uh, an insane asylum. And then the other side would just be like a wall with like nothing, right? So like the person on this side, which was me, wouldn't really get that much of the action. Like I would have to like go like that to see what was happening on Nick's side. All in all, we had so much fun. We probably will go back next year. But here's why I'm sharing that story. Because I know for a fact that that's probably the first time that those individuals made that. That was their first program, right? And you know what they didn't do? They didn't say to themselves like, oh, well, we we don't have it all figured out. We don't have all the logistics of how we're going to get all these cards in here. We don't have all the logistics of how we're going to make both sides uh, scary. They didn't do that because it was the first time that they were trying to do that. And actually, I looked it up and it was the first time that they did that. So as a consumer, I was still really happy with my experience. I could tell that, yes, there was a little bit of space of improvement, but I was still thrilled to have something to do on Halloween, a, a, a thing that I enjoy. I was still thrilled that I was able to go out and do something. So imagine if they would have said, hey, if like the, the head people of the operation and the event would have said, hey, we don't have everything figured out, so let's not do this. Guess what? I would have stayed home and I wouldn't have laughed and gotten scared and enjoy some time with my boyfriend. Does this example make sense to you? It's so much better to do it imperfect and learn from it and make it better than to not do it at all. Because when you're not doing it at all, when you're not creating that program, you are taking away from so many people who would be more than happy and satisfied with it. As imperfect as it may be the first time. And here's another thing. Perfection is not even a real thing because even when you get it to the point of perfection, like my six-month program is pretty darn perfect, if I do say so myself. Perfect with quotation marks. And there is still things that I'm changing and adding and tweaking every single year, every single year, whether it's changing a sentence, whether it's adding a testimonial, whether it's tweaking uh, something else that I, inc- that I incorporate into the program, whether it's adding another bonus, whether it's creating a prettier sell speech for it, it's something that I'm constantly changing and shifting. So even when you feel like something is perfect, it's still not because there's always space for improvement. So much better to give your clients a great experience than to not give your clients anything at all because you're waiting for the perfect experience. Is this making sense? Is this resonating? Are you like, no, 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 but I still have to get it perfect. Like you don't get it. Like I'm not ready to launch it until it's perfect. If you do, let me know because we're going to work through that together whether you're here live or watching the replay. Um, so just going back to this point, what's imperfect for you, it's perfect for others, right? So like, I'm sure the people who put together that Halloween drive, they were like, oh my God, there are so many imperfections here. To me, it was the perfect experience, right? Like I, I'm a business owner, so I'm always like over analyzing like how uh, business operations can do better. But overall, it was such a great and fun experience. It was perfect for me. I got out of the house. I got scared. I got into the Halloween spirit. I went on a date with my boyfriend. I saw something I've never seen before. It was perfect for me. That doesn't take away from the fact that the the founders and the creators of the drive-thru will probably do it better next year. Yeah? Okay. Your program evolves. It evolves. It, it will always evolve. And it is impossible to get it 100% right because you don't have data to pull from when you're first starting out yeah so that's really like I'm gonna keep it very simple and short today because that's really the main tip that I want to give you if you have been struggling with program creation if you have felt stuck if you don't know what to put in there if you're trying to get it perfect if if you're trying to figure out the features, if you're trying to figure out the results, if you're trying to figure out who it's for, 
give yourself permission to do it imperfect. It's okay, right? And if you really, really, really feel like, oh my God, I created my first program and I'm really, really questioning it, offer a few beta spots, right? Like offer some discounted spots and be like, hey, just created my first program. I've never had anyone go through it. This is the price. I would love to get a few beta testers for a super, super low price point so you can give me some feedback and tell me what you think and tell me if it's helpful. This way you can build your confidence. You can start making a little bit of money. This way you can get feedback and enhance the course and feel more comfortable with it and all that good stuff. Always a great idea if you really feel like, I can't take people at full price because I'm so doubtful of this program. Is this making sense? Is this making sense? Um, Do you have any questions? Anything else? Um, Let's see, what date is it next week? While I wait for some questions, if there are any. So next week is the 20th. So next week we will have our regular show at 10 a.m., I think next week it's scheduled to be how I guarantee to make my to make back my coaching investment when I work with a coach. So if you've been wanting to work with a coach, this one is going to be really really helpful for you. Um, if you work with a coach and you haven't gotten back your investment, if you if you're just interested in the subject, it's going to be really cool for you. Um, so next week we will have the show. January 4th, we will not have the show because I'm going to be on vacation. Nick and I are taking my family on a small weekend trip. We rented an Airbnb. We're very excited. I haven't gone away with my family in a very long time. So the 4th, we're not going to have the show. But next week, we will. So definitely tune in. Um, Let's see. Love the idea of beta testers. Hello. For some reason, this is not showing me your faces, so I don't really know who's commenting. So whoever said hello, welcome. Um, We're kind of wrapping up right now. So if you just joined, go back because I think this one was really, really good. The last thing I want to say is this is not for those of you who applied for the Rise Up giveaway. If you apply for the Rise Up giveaway, I think... At this point, we have one spot left at the discounted rate. So like that's a complete different thing for you. If you have been looking at Rice Up as we launch it, normally we have two out of three spots. Okay, Rice Up is, like I said, my six-week coaching program where I take brand new coaches from having the desire to build a business and nothing else to having a solid business that's already being marketed. So if you have been looking at that, there are three spots. There were three spots open for that, and there are only two left. So if you're interested, definitely book a discovery call or message me so we can talk about it. If you really want someone to support you with program creation and program development, phase two of that program is literally the only thing that we focus on. We get your first program out together. You don't have to do it alone. You don't have to question yourself. It's literally you and I collaborating back and forward until we get it right. Super, super amazing to be able to do that with someone by your side. So if you apply for the scholarship and you want that last discounted spot, message me ASAP. And if you are just eyeing a rice up as I launch it for January, definitely message me because it's only been a couple of days, a few days, and we already have two spots left for that. Okay. Other than that, if you are here watching the replay, ask all the questions all the questions, throw them my way. Let me know what you think. Interact, engage with me. I want to see your name pop up. I want to connect with you. I will see you guys next Monday at 10 a.m. We're going to dive deep into more of a personal uh, show episode, but I think it's going to be super helpful for every single one of you. Happy holidays. I send you guys so much love. Thank you for those of you who tune in live every single week. Love and adore all of you. And get ready because the Land of New Coaches has a lot of amazing things coming in 2021, starting with a free goal-setting party. So keep your eyes out. It's going to be super, super amazing. Bye, everyone.